Welcome to my course testing AI application using deep eval ragas and more tools using Olama and local large language model. This course is a path to the AI QA engineering because this is the trend which is currently evolving at the moment. Well, what are we going to learn from this entire course and does this course needs a lot of uh, ML or AI knowledge before I begin this particular course. And we don't even have AI related knowledge other than working with chat GPT and few gen AI tools. How can I even start this course and start learning this course? Well, if you have all these questions, all these questions are going to be answered in this particular course. This course is just a start to learn more about what AI applications are, what are the types of AI application and what are the tools to test these AI applications and how you can evaluate an AI application and how you can understand the potentials of running your large language model locally and you can perform all these operation using your own machine instead of you spending even a single penny to the cloud. So you are going to learn every single details in this particular course and even if you don't have any background on AI or machine learning this particular course is going to help you understand everything from the scratch. But the next question naturally come is why should I learn it now? Will Selenium or Playwright won't do these kind of uh, testing which uh, is done using an automated testing fashion? Well, the answer is really no, because we can't really use uh, an UI based testing tool or automated testing tools to make these kind of testing operations. We definitely need to do an entirely new approach to test these large language model applications because large language model applications, even though they have got a UI, you still have to learn a lot more details under the hood, like how things are working. Well, as that said, now it's high time for us to start learning the AI courses. But if you have another question saying, why suddenly everything is starting right now? Well, guess what? Starting 2021, a lot of companies are moving towards AI or adapting to the fast AI based solutions. It could be using an existing AI model, using OpenAI or Claude or Gemini models, or training the existing models using a Hugging Face or even some open source model like Llama, for instance, and using some AI tools or toolings to support these uh, infrastructure that you need for the AI application to work, or extending the AI models capabilities using RAG or implementing new tools to make your AI model more uh, more domain knowledge specific so that your applications can start giving more uh, informative answer and more knowledgeable answer than how it was very dumb earlier. And not only that, we also have got this AI agent coming in picture, which makes things even more simplified these days. With all these adaptations the companies are doing at the moment, it is high time for you to start learning the artificial intelligence and testing these artificial intelligence. So learning AI and learning to test, evaluate and AI applications are a paramount in today's world. And that's the reason why I have made this course in such a way that you have all the information starting from an introduction to local large language models and local large language model applications, understanding the deep eval, testing a RAG apps with the uh, deep eval. So RAG stands for the retrieval augmented generation. So we'll be testing that. And we'll also be testing the AI agents with the deep eval and we'll see how we can make use of these tools to see a holistic view of how our application are performing using these tools. We'll also be understanding how to work with other tools like Ragas for instance and testing the applications with Ragas and also how we can test the applications using Hugging Face Evaluate and also Galileo and all these tools are going to make our life even more easier to understand how we can test our applications and the LLM applications and testing an application even if it is built using local large language models. And finally, all these details that you are seeing over here, like testing the applications and the LLMs, we are going to be doing everything in our local large language model in this course. And you will see the potentials of using the local LLM makes your life even more easier because that way we maintain the privacy because everything is running within our own computer. And if you are testing your large language models applications, which is built for the healthcare or insurance or something which is more uh, very restrictive to be sent to the outside world, then local LLM is going to be the one place that you should be looking for. And as I said, in this course, we are going to be evaluating everything as I told you in the local large language models. And also we will be using the deep eval to do something like this. As you can see over here, we'll be testing the rag based application using deep eval, something like this, as you can see. And also we'll be testing AI agents as you can see over here. So we'll be discussing all these details in this course. 
And finally, the entire course is taught using Visual Studio Code, Python, and you can see that the entire course will have the uh, structure using the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So if you just open any of the Jupyter Notebooks over here, you will see the informations as you can see from the start to the end, like how I trained the entire course during the course of time. So you will have the entire records over here so that any time if you wanted to learn about these uh, details from your machine, you will be pretty much seeing exactly what I have covered in the course during the recording of this entire course. Well, as that said, the learning material in this course is going to be very, very amazing. And you will be seeing every single information that you are going to be needing to learn the details from the complete ground up. Well, as that said, that's about this course, guys. And you are going to be quite excited to learn all these informations while you start thinking about how these amazing technologies are going to be taking away today's work in a completely new dimension in upcoming days. Catch you in the first lecture of our course. And in this section, we are going to talk about testing and also known as evaluating our large language models. So we'll discuss how we can evaluate our large language models. Well, why should we really evaluate a large language model in first place? In order to discuss this, we need to first understand this part as you can see over here. We as a user will send a prompt to the large language model. It can be either a local large language model or it can be a large language model which is hosted on the cloud like ChatGPT for that matter or DeepSeek for that matter. So if you're going to be asking a question to DeepSeek over here, we are going to get a response back from the large language model. I mean, if we user give a question or a prompt, then we get a response back, which is great. But now we need to evaluate the response that we got from the large language model is correct or not. I mean, if we know the answer already, we know that this response that we're getting from the large language model is correct or wrong. But if we don't know the answer, then it could be tricky. For example, as you can see over here, I'm going to ask a question here saying, what is the capital of New Zealand? Just give the city name. So I'm just restricting the large language model to just give me a city name. So if I ask this question right now, the large language model is going to give me a response saying Wellington. So I'm going to open chat GPT window over here and I'm going to say, what is the capital of NZ? Just give me the city name. And you will see that immediately the chat GPT is going to give me the response saying Wellington, which is great. So we are going to get this particular answer as discussed in the diagram over here. Amazing. But now we are going to go a level further. So now over here, I have given a entire document to our large language model. And then I'm going to ask the question to the large language model that write a summary of my document. And now this large language model is going to read the document and then it's going to give you a summary of the document that it has read. The same thing you can actually do it from here as well. So you can upload a file and then you can start asking the question based on that particular file uh, from a chat GPT or even Gemini for that matter. So if you try to do that, the response is going to come out and you can verify the response is going to come from the large language model is correct or not based on your understanding of the document already. But if you think that the response is going to be coming out from the large language model is always correct, you may be in trouble because we can't 100% predict that the response that is going to come out from this large language model can be accurate. And that's the reason why we need to do some testing out from there. And that's when the testing starts kicking in. So you see here, this is a very straightforward question and you are getting get the response back. So that is pretty obvious. So I mean, you can do a quick test based on the response that you get. But over here, while you give a document and then you get a response like a summary of the document, you may probably need to verify whether the summary is correct or not. So that's when the QA hat comes in. And then what if you gonna ask a question saying, write a C sharp .NET code for the playwright test. Now the deep seek is gonna give you a response uh, it's a code block and now you may be thinking that the code block which is given back from the DeepSeq R1 could be correct but if you try to run this code in your IDE that code might not work and if you just uh, in I mean if you then go and ask the large language model can you try to fix this issue which I'm currently getting based on the code that you have generated then the DeepSeq will go and say ah oh, sorry I just made a mistake and I'm gonna go and fix this code for you and then it gives you a new code. I mean, we can't really always 100% be sure that the code which is 
generated by this large language model can be 100% accurate. And that's the reason why we have to ensure that the response that we get back from the large language model is always correct or not and that's when the evaluation kicks in. So I hope you got the idea why we should do the evaluation of a large language model based applications. And now let's get our attention back to what is large language models evaluation. Well, LLMS are typically evaluated using a standardized set of data set designed to assess their performance across a diverse range of tasks such as text summarization that we just saw an example or a open book question answering. So you can ask a question like what is the capital of New Zealand then it's going to give you the answer saying oh there we go it's Wellington. So that is an open book question answering that you can ask as well and similarly you can ask for the code generation like you write a C-sharp code and then it will give you an answer based on that and then language understanding you can verify whether the language that you're going to give in is going to be understood by the large language model and then it's going to give you the response back. And these data sets serve as a benchmark to provide a fair and comparative analysis of different models, helping researchers and developers gauge their effectiveness in handling real world scenarios. This is quite important because while we go in an organization where we are going to be start testing these large language model, we need to understand or assess if this response that we're going to get from the LLM is always quite right or not. And then Evaluation metrics, and this is something very important. This is where you're gonna be having all the metrics, you're gonna hold all the metrics to ensure that the response that you're gonna be testing against the large language model is correct or not. So LM evaluation metrics will fall in two broad categories. One is the traditional and another one is the non-traditional metrics. So traditional metrics focuses on word order and structures comparing generated text against a reference or that is called as the ground truth and the example includes exact match or blue score rogue and f1 scores commonly used for tasks like summarization and translation so these are some of the uh, some of the some of the way or techniques that you can actually use to verify your large language model's response against the ground truth which is going to act as a reference for your evaluation. We are going to be using this reference quite a lot in our testing because we are going to verify that this is the response that I'm going to be getting back from or expecting from our large language model and this is the response that I'm going to get back from the large language model application. Now I need to compare the actual versus expected. So that's when the reference or the other way is called the ground truth is very, very important. And we are going to verify based on the exact match, blue score, rogue and F1 score to see whether the application really behaves as expected or the large language models application is really giving us the response that we are looking for. And there is also this non-traditional metrics leverages a semantic understanding and the model's own capability to assess the generated text. And these can work with or without a reference text using a techniques like embedding similarities, perplexity, LLM based scoring and more nuanced evaluation. And this is something that you are going to be doing while you actually fine tune a large language model and verify whether the large language model is working as expected and also what is the scoring or evaluation scoring that you get from the large language models based on the fine tuning that you are trying to do. So those evaluations we can do it as well and then we can verify how things are working. And that's when this hugging face evaluate method comes in very handy to verify how you can evaluate a large language models uh, output based on the given input that you're gonna be getting. So I mean those are things that we can use to evaluate the large language models application as well as the model itself. And there are many other evaluation techniques available. We are going to talk about these evaluation metrics later in our upcoming lectures of this section. But you may notice that over here there is this uh, intelligence from Visual Studio Core that I have taken is actually from the deep eval and you can see that there are so many different metrics available so answer relevance and then base conversational metrics base metrics base multi-model metrics 
you see that how many different matrices are available there are many different matrices and the scroll bar is over here so if you just keep scrolling down there are going to be a lot of different metrics that you can see other than what i have showed over here so we are going to talk about few of these metrics like very very few metrics in later part of this particular section but these are some of the most important thing that we can use to assess or evaluate